So folks are saying one of the few weak spots on the Lions team is the kicking game. It wasn't that long ago when the Lions went 32 straight seasons boasting one of the best kickers in the game and it began in 1980 with Eddie Murray. And while his playing career didn't culminate in Detroit, his life after football has. Jason Colthorpe is live at Ford Field tonight and Jason, you had a chance to sit down with the Lions great. It's really interesting to talk about obviously his perspective and also the Lions hype now, right? Well, full disclosure, this is one of my guys. As a kid growing up, my favorite players were Billy Sims. Man, I love Bubba Baker, and I loved Eddie Murray. And I remember a few years ago, we all rooted for Matthew Stafford when he went to the Rams and won a Super Bowl, right? Well, way, way before that, I remember rooting hard when Eddie Murray was that lion who went somewhere else and won the Super Bowl. Eddie Murray didn't grow up wanting to be a kicker. Even when I went to Tulane, I wanted to play. I didn't want to be a kicker. I wanted to do something more. And I go, you, you want me just to kick? And I go, that's it. That's all we want you to do. I think I prepared myself well, and I think that's The Lions picked well. Murray with the first pick of the seventh round in the 1980 NFL draft. He'd go on to play more games than anyone in that draft, 250 total, and make the Pro Bowl as a rookie. His 12 years with the Lions, though, were rough, only making the playoffs three times. We always had some exceptional players, but we just couldn't quite mesh as a team. He remembers all the big kicks, including the wild one at the end of a game against the Cowboys in 1981. Eric Hipple uh, threw a pass in the seam to Ulysses Norris, our backup tight end. With time ticking down and no timeouts, there was so much confusion, they never even got into a kicking formation. Half the players heard field goal, half the players heard down the ball. Murray comes striding in. Here comes Murray. They have too many men in the field. So what ended up happening, we all rushed onto the field and kicked the ball, and the officials didn't have enough time to count everybody. It's good. No time left. But then afterwards, they took a picture from the thing, and we had 12 guys on the field, and we beat the Cowboys. I think Eddie Murray's on the bottom of that pile. Billy Sims is on top. Uh, I get a lot of people talking about that kick. There weren't many misses in Murray's career, but the one that does stand out is the one that would have beaten the 49ers to advance in the 1983 playoffs. All in the in the game, it was a really kind of a gusty, swirly kind of a wind, and, and Candlestick was known for its winds. And that way, there was a right to left wind. So I'm going, I'm going to aim right at the right upright, and hit it, and the wind will blow it in. I hit it so pure, the ball just kept going straight. That miss spurred him to be a better kicker, to work harder on his craft than ever so, before. Good. I got better because of that. Yeah. You know, and I had those back-to-back -back years where I missed one field goal uh, each year. That's never happened in the NFL. Coming to midfield are Dallas captains Eddie Murray. Two seasons after leaving Detroit, Murray landed with the defending Super Bowl champs two games into the season. And Lions fans watched as one of their own finally found Super Bowl glory, albeit with another team. You, you talk to every team that won, won it, they get AFC championship rings or NFC championship rings, depending on which side loses. None of them wear those rings. They wear this ring, the Super Bowl winners. And so that's how much it means. I, I just felt honored to be a part of that team, and uh, it, was, uh, it was great to win the Super Bowl with them. Yeah. He retired for good in 2000. These days, Eddie is very active in the community with Hope Network, which impacts 35,000 people across Michigan. Knock them dead, guys. Have a good one, Tim. All righty, take care. Yeah. For the last nine years, he's hosted its Golf Classic, which always turns up a few current and former Detroit sports stars. First of all, thank you, everybody, for the turnout. Um, you guys are the largest group I've had in the nine years. So we have 54 foursomes. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, the Murray legacy isn't over with the Lions. This season, Eddie and his wife, Cynthia, will be rooting for their daughter, Nicole, who made the cheerleading squad. I bet you're going to be excited that opening day seeing her on yeah, the sidelines. Yeah, I, I, I believe it's the first time there's been a player's daughter make the cheerleaders for the Lions. So uh, it's, uh, it's a nice thing for her to accomplish.
Oh, yeah, they are thrilled about that. Going to be at every game just going crazy for, for Nicole. And you probably picked up on this. The thing about talking to Eddie Murray, uh, it's one amazing story after another. And I'm sorry, guys, but I saved the best one for tomorrow's morning show. I'm a little partial to that crew. But it starts in 1980 when Eddie Murray was at Tulane. He's getting ready for the NFL draft, and he has this strange workout with the special teams coach of the New York Giants, a guy named Bill Belichick. Maybe you've heard of him. Well, coming up tomorrow, you'll hear him tell this crazy story about how he ends up a lion and not a giant and what happened when he ran into Bill Belichick 35 years later on the field right behind me. Pretty good story. You'll have to tune in. Oh, that's a good tease. Sorry. I don't like that. Yeah. All right. We'll be tuning in tomorrow morning. Thanks, Jason. We appreciate it. What a I great went to interview. the Karen Drew School of Teases right See? there. <laughs> You're I'm trying to teach you, Cole Thorpe. You're learning. You're learning. I'm You're doing good. Mold me.